Hey everyone, Vault Fox here, and for today's video, I'm going to be walking you all through how I 3D printed and finished up my very own Bo-Katan helmet. As always, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for sponsoring this video, and if you would like to join them, you can head over to patreon.com slash vaultfox, where with various tiers you will get behind-the-scenes content. I actually released the script for this video this past Sunday for my $5 and $10 tiers, and some of the tiers, after a couple of months of support, you will get a package of your very own chaotic cosplay stickers of mine, or if you are more comfortable using the platform Ko-Fi, I actually have set up the exact tier system that I have on Patreon over on Ko-Fi if you like to support creators that way. I'm also thinking about just putting the tier system here on YouTube as well for like YouTube memberships because I know a lot of people have a preference as to what platform they use for that kind of stuff. But anyways, enough about me, let's get on to this helmet tutorial. <laughs> for this build, I went with a 3D model by Mystery Makers who, if you watched a couple of my previous videos, you know that I also went with him for the entire suit of armor of Bo-Katan. I'll have the files linked down below as well as previous videos on how I printed this helmet out in one piece using Kira's built-in support blocker tool. The helmet took about two and a half days to print using Zaltec PLA filament, which I have a coupon code if you are interested and it will get you 5% off of your order of Zaltec filament. And I removed all supports with a variety of tools, including the good old trusty plastic clippers and these hook tools that I got from Harbor Freight. On the bottom of the helmet and around the visor area, it needs a little bit more help to get that support you know, stuck on -ness off of there. I used the barrel of my soldering iron to gently melt the plastic down a bit to give me a smoother surface to work from. Now that the helmet is all cleaned up, it's time to get rid of these pesky layer lines on here. So let's go over the materials and products I'm going to be using in order to do that. First off, I've got photopolymer resin, also known as UV resin, a disposable cup to pour it into, a large paintbrush or chip brush, 91% or higher isopropyl alcohol, some blue shop towels, cardboard or a silicone mat in order to cover your workspace with. And last but certainly not least is our safety equipment, which includes a respirator and filters rated for fumes, safety goggles, and some nitrile gloves. Side note, if you'd rather not use photopolymer resin, I do have some other videos on how I smooth my 3D prints without using resin. And I do have a tutorial coming, I just don't know when it will be up, going over how I finished this Fennec Shand helmet. And I'm pretty sure that all that I did was I used my mouse sander to sand down the raw 3D print and then just kind of layered on filler primer and sanded until I got the finish here. I say that because I personally do not use this method anymore. However, I would rather you approach it in a safe manner and know all the things you need to do to keep yourself safe. We are using this resin against manufacturers like guidance. And that's kind of true in a lot of things that we use for cosplay. I mean, I don't think the inventor of Bondo thought that, you know, <laughs> years down the line, people would be using it to sand their 3D prints with. It's just important to know that the materials that you're working with can be hazardous to your health and to just approach them with that in mind. So the first thing that I do is make sure that I am working in a well-ventilated area and that no pets or children or really anyone that doesn't have a mask on is no longer around. Also make sure that you are not working near any ambient or direct sunlight as this will cause your resin to cure prematurely. I then put my mask, gloves, and goggles on and shake up my bottle of resin. I pour some of this into a disposable cup and I get out the 91% alcohol to pour in a glass jar as this will help us to clean out our brush after painting on the UV resin later. I go ahead and grab my cardboard and place it underneath my print and then give the entire helmet a coat of UV resin. This is where I tell you that it's best if you can wear long sleeves in case you flick some of this resin onto your skin, but as you can see here, I didn't even follow that directive and I know that some of you guys are just gonna do this anyway, like I did here. I mean, it was really hot out when I was working on this, so that's that was my excuse. What's important to note is if you get any of this resin on you, it's imperative that you wash it off immediately with soap and water. Do not use isopropyl alcohol or any type of alcohol to try and wash this off your skin. Use soap and water and try and do it as immediately as you notice that you've got it on your skin. The most important thing to remember when working with UV resin is that it doesn't work like regular two-part resins that harden after a set amount of time. This type of resin only will cure when exposed to UV light. So the light from the sun or UV LEDs or lights or in a you know UV resin printer. This is why I put a piece of cardboard down because I can just put the cardboard outside beside the helmet and it will cure any of that resin that dripped off of my piece. This is also what you should do with your little disposable cup of resin. Make sure you put that outside whenever everything is curing because you don't want to throw away uncured resin. Anyways, after that first coat is on, I place it outside for 15 minutes to cure in the sunlight. If it's too hot where you live, you can create a UV curing box or purchase some UV lights or flashlights. I live in Pennsylvania, so it never really gets 
that hot where it's gonna melt my PLA out in the sun. And if it is that hot, then I'm probably not going to be doing anything in my garage anyway. <laughs> this is also when I take my paintbrush and swish it around in the 91% alcohol to clean it off of the resin and be ready to use for our next layer. Just make sure that you don't absentmindedly walk outside with your paintbrush with resin still on it because that is no longer going to be a paintbrush that you can use and ask me how I know that. <laughs> After 15 minutes of cure time, the surface will feel and appear tacky to the touch. But this layer is cured, we just need to clean the surface of our resin. We're going to just take some 91% alcohol and put it into a spray bottle and spray down the entire helmet. As I'm doing this, I'm wiping it away with a blue shop towel as this creates a little bit less lint than say like white paper towels that you typically use in the kitchen. This part is crucial as it's cleaning off the remaining uncured resin on the surface of our piece. This whole thing of the resin being tacky and all that is a phenomenon known as oxygen inhibition and I go into it a little bit in this video here. Once it's all done, continue adding more layers until you're satisfied with your finish. You probably don't need to clean your resin in between each layer but I figured it was better to be safe than sorry. I ended up doing about three layers of resin and go into that whole process in more detail in this video linked above and down in the description for you guys. Now with our helmet all cured, it's time to get to sanding this helmet. No, you're not going to escape sanding even with this UV resin method. I personally use 120 grit sandpaper on a mouse sander and go over the entire helmet. Once I'm done with the sanding portion, I make sure to brush the dust off and give it a coat of filler primer. Because I was doing this whole process for a challenge video just to see how quickly I could get this sanded and you know ready to paint, this is how it looked at the end of that challenge. As you can tell, there's only a few high spots that we need to sand down to the low, and I used my mouse sander with 120 grit sandpaper to accomplish that and gave the whole helmet a final coat of filler primer to prep it for paint. Before I dive into that step, here are all of the Montana Gold paints that I'm going to be using using on this helmet. Shock black for the base, silver chrome to use as a base for the paint chip weathering and on the ear caps, ultramarine for the back band and paint chip weathering, the color roof for the allies, shock white for the front of the helmet, and sky blue for the main blue that we're using on the helmet as well as the armor. I also use a Vallejo liquid masking medium to mask off pieces on the helmet for weathering sake and I also had some painters tape and this 3M detailing tape on the side to help with the masking of layers a little bit better. I started off with a base layer of shock black. Just make sure you spray this stuff a bit further back from your piece because as you can see here I had some paint runs in this after it dried. It was a pretty easy fix though I just took some 220 grit sandpaper and lightly sanded it down and I actually took this into my laundry room to do a little bit of wet sanding which ended up working a lot better. After that was all cleaned up it was time to layer on the silver chrome and this will be the base for a lot of the weathering on the helmet. I also use this paint on the smaller greebly bits of the helmet like the vent piece, ear caps, and rangefinder stock and those were all resin printed for me by my husband because I still haven't learned how to support resin 3D prints. I'll get there one day. I just have too much going on right now. <laughs> Once that coat was dry, I took some Vallejo masking liquid and Q-tips to put the latex on everywhere I thought the metal would show through to create a sort of chipping effect. I'm both following the reference photos to place the weathering where it should be and also giving myself a little bit of artistic freedom to put it anywhere else I like. I really like weathering so I went kind of nuts with my weathering here. The latex takes about 10 minutes to fully dry and I give the helmet a coat of ultramarine and we repeat the same steps to mask mask off all of the same spots on our helmet where blue would poke through, making sure to mask off the original silver chrome layer and some space outside so it overlaps. Actually, as I'm writing the script, I'm realizing it would be easier to do the ultramarine layer first, latex that, and then put down the silver chrome, so I would recommend you do that. <laughs> Once that layer is dry, it's time to mask off the white area on the front of the helmet, and for that I use this 3M detailing tape, which works a lot better than regular painter's tape because it works a lot better along curves, around like the forehead and visor area and to cover up the rest of the helmet I just use some plastic bags and some larger painters tape. And yeah, uh, please ignore the random gray on the visor. I was gonna do something else for those markings and it ended up not working out so just ignore them. Pretend they're not there. I then give the exposed portion of the helmet a coat of shock white. I then let the paint cure overnight and now it's on to creating a stencil for Bose ally markings. In past videos I would take my night owl template that I have linked down in the description and transfer it onto painters tape on a flat surface. It was serviceable and worked, but I thought that this time I would try putting a garbage bag on the outside of the helmet and use painter's tape to build up a stencil in the same form as the helmet itself. So it was actually curved as opposed to being a flat thing that I, you know, just slapped on there. It sounds like it would work in theory and I'm sure if I was a more patient person, I would have been able to make this work. But as it was, I wasn't patient and I ended up using some of the stencil while adding in some of that 3M detailing tape to fix the stencil itself instead of just making a new one. <laughs> 
So instead of going in with roof for the owl eyes here, I chose this random Vallejo gray that doesn't really matter because I ended up painting over it with that roof shape later on in the process because I hated how it looked. To get the triangle markings on the top of the dome, I just freehanded it with 3M detailing tape and I did the same with the V marking and I do not recommend doing it this way. The amount of fussing I had to do with this is just insane and I know that there's easier ways to do it, but this is just what ended up happening in the tornado that is my cosplay creating process. And as you can kind of tell, it was around this point that I was getting incredibly frustrated with myself because I've painted these markings on dozens of helmets for commissions and yet I still struggle with doing it in an efficient manner and decided to vent about it here. I um I didn't really mess up making the stencils. Well, no, okay, okay. I did mess up and it didn't go how I wanted it to. And as you were probably watching this video, you saw me doing this in a really backwards way where I essentially freehanded the stencils, like the night owl template onto it. And I essentially took my um, vinyl tape. This is usually used in car detailing. So it has a really nice, it can curve a lot. I was just basically taping all of the patterns onto the helmet. I also wasn't doing it in a very, you know, smart way where I didn't do the all the black things all at once and then all of the gray things all at once. And that's because sometimes when, um, especially me, whenever we're making things, we don't do things rationally and we just want to get them done. <laughs> and the benefit to you guys seeing a video on YouTube or watching a tutorial video is that usually the person will, you know, cut it together in a way that it'll make it make sense. However, I there's no way I'm gonna be able to cut this together to make it make sense. You're gonna, it, it would be like all this bouncing around. I basically just wanted to come on here and let you guys know that I'm not perfect, none of us are perfect, and hindsight is 2020. So again, you guys watching this video, you will probably have a lot of things to say about the way that I did it and how I did it backwards, and that is totally fine. That is your, you are allowed to have that opinion. I just wanted to come on here and let you know that I'm having those opinions about it right now, wondering why the heck I did it this way. I let everything cure overnight before masking off just the white portion on the front of the helmet. I used a shop towel and painter's tape to mask everything and then used 3M detailing tape around the outside so it would give it a more crisp edge. The helmet then got a coat of sky blue and I know it looks scary and bright here, but just trust the process. It'll get toned down with the weathering later. That was exactly why I went with this blue because I just loved how it looked weathered. So to start griming this up, I first go over the helmet with my airbrush and a mixture of black and gray in the pot to give the helmet a little bit more depth and dimension. I'm mostly going around the edges and essentially tracing them. And then here is how everything looked with just the airbrush weathering. And now it's time to get everything good and grimy. For this step, you're just going to need oil paints and shades of brown and burnt Sienna, some shop towels, chip brushes, and naphtha or oil paint thinners. I then mix up a dab or two of oil paint with the naphtha and create a wash, which we'll use to paint on with our paintbrush. Then as I'm painting it on, I take a blue shop towel and I pour some of the naphtha on and begin to stipple around the helmet where I put the oil wash on. And it's kind of muddying up the surface and also taking it off and then placing it other places to make it look a little bit more natural. And at the very end, I dip my chip brush into the naphtha and flick it all around the helmet. This leads to a sort of water weathered effect and it dries really quickly because naphtha kind of evaporates pretty quickly. I then let this dry for a day and it was on to putting in the rangefinder. I glued the mechanism onto the right ear area and yeah, I know it's not finished. No one's gonna see it except for YouTube. But here's how the other pieces slot together to create a movable rangefinder. I decided to attach this ear cap with magnets so I could remove the rangefinder for travel and the other ear cap was glued straight on. Next up, we're going to get the visor on here and I'm just using this welding visor that I found on Amazon and a visor template that I created a while back. To create your own template, you can just place some painter's tape inside the opening, trace around the visor space with a Sharpie, and then transfer it to cardstock. Or you could even just take the tape and just put it right on top of your visor and cut from that. Like that, that will work too. But if you wanna have it for later projects, then I recommend putting it on some cardstock. I use tin snips to cut out the visor, and then I do a quick test fit before using this two-part epoxy clay to cement the visor in place. As for the padding, I like to keep things simple, and I just use three-inch upholstery foam that I cut up into strips and glue in with hot glue. Also, please don't try to catch a completely saturated piece of foam with your bare hands because it will not go well and you will need to have bandages on your hands for like two weeks before a convention. And with the padding successfully glued in, it's time for a little test wear and it sits exactly how I want. I am honestly so happy with how this turned out. I am especially proud of the weathering job that I did on this. I think I got it pretty close to what we see on screen and I'm even more impressed with myself after receiving the Black Series Bo-Katan helmet. But I am damn proud of the paint job that I did on this. Like. 
how close do these two look to each other? And like, here's the thing. My therapist told me to toot my own horn more, so here I am tooting my horn. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm really sorry that it took so long to get out. And also, if you want a chance to win this Black Series Bo-Katan helmet, because I don't need to, then make sure you're subscribed and check back here for an unboxing video of the Black Series helmet, as well as a giveaway. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Bye! Roof for the owl eyes. <laughs> Why is saying roof like really hard? The color roof for the outline. Fuck. Roof for the owl. I can't say this word.